<laughs> Hello! Uh, well, I forgot to make the intro, so this is a retroactive intro. <laughs> so, um, in this episode of Finno Greek Machining, it will be the, the veins for this uh, rotary vein compressor. And yeah, <laughs> there will be uh, not uh, profanity, but not uh, very far from that. Um, well, uh, yeah, uh, there is one explosion. <laughs> yep, and it will be slitting so. Yeah, but uh, well, uh, let's see what happens. Uh, well, uh, first of all, the material I'm going to use in this case is Uddeholm, uh, wait a minute, Uddeholm uh, uh, Vanadis 8, I believe. Vanadis, no, <laughs> Vanadis 4. So uh, it will be Udeholm Vanadis 4, which is uh, tool steel. Uh, it's quite tough as it is unhardened. You can uh, heat treat this uh, up to uh, over 60 uh, uh, in the uh, C scale, hardness scale. So <laughs> it, uh, I won't do that. Uh, you can make uh, really cutting tools out of this. It's very good steel for making knives, I believe. Uh, well, maybe a little bit brittle for that one, but for our veins, uh, I believe it uh, it's uh, good as it is uh, without any heat treatment. Uh, it's uh, different, uh, its hardness is uh, very different from the hardness of the cylinder. Uh, cylinder is way softer than this is, and this is good news in a way that uh, it doesn't uh, gull as easily. Uh, well, there will be a lot of oil included, always, but still there is a danger of gulling uh, when you rotate it really fast, and uh, well, yeah, okay. So, uh, let's start with uh, it will be a, entirely a milling job. Well, <coughs> we have here a piece of uh, material that I'm now going to use for this, these veins. Uh, we need six of them. We will see. Anyway, uh, so what we need to do is to fix this in this table. Now, and uh, there is a problem, because I need them to be absolutely straight. So now if I try to wiggle this... <laughs> it's uh, like a crooked in each and every possible way. Aha, uh -huh, okay. So how to do this then? Uh, namely, if I now just clamp it from there and there, and uh, try to clean it up... Uh, 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 when I loosen those clamps, it will spring back <laughs> to to its crooked state, and there you are. You didn't achieve anything with that uh, cleanup. But uh, I think I can use uh, an alternative method here. Uh, I determined that this way, when it sits this way, and when you push here and here, you have a minimal uh, wiggle wigglement going on, and furthermore. <coughs> I will place these uh, copper pieces under there, somewhere, so that they accommodate uh, some of the irregularities of uh, those surfaces. And I will uh, just place it uh, about straight there, uh, just by side. Because now what we are going to do is to create two uh, clean faces in this side. The centers I leave alone, center part I leave alone. Then we know that this surface and that surface, when they are, they are now done, are parallel, uh, like on the same plane, and they are straight. So then I can flip this around and use those surfaces to, to do whatever I want to. And yeah, this is Uddeholm Vanadis 4. This is tool steel, uh, very good quality tool steel. 
as a matter in fact. It's just to clamp it there. Okay, it's about straight. Yeah, those copper copper pieces accommodate some of the irregularities on the bottom of this. And now, of course, it's not tight on the corners. It's very tight here. You can hear it by knocking it. That's solid. That's not solid. This is because we have this uh, 0 0.1 millimeter gap there in between. This uh, copper sim is uh, copper foil is 0 0.1 millimeter thick. Uh, this is uh, uh, well. Uh, it can accommodate three uh, inserts, this one. But I only have now one here. Uh, I want to use this, uh, this time, as a fly cutter. So therefore I omitted those two. And why is that? Uh, this is because if I... Uh, there are minor changes on the height. And uh, this produces, uh, well... It's not exactly a bad surface, but it's not uh, what I'm after here. I'm after a very good surface finish here. Furthermore, I have trammed this. Uh, usually you don't need to tram uh, this milling machine at all. But in this case I wanted to get rid of the very last one hundredths of a millimeter. And, uh, well, <laughs> there wasn't nothing much to tram. It was something like uh, half hundreds of a millimeter I could get rid of. First of all I will feed this quite slowly and I don't run this very fast. Uh, something like uh, maybe 400. Well that's already too much maybe but let's see. What I want to do is to take as wide surfaces here as it's now possible. So I go here First, well, I think we can get that much there quite safely, maybe more even. Well, that's a safe place. Then I go across. And see that we have a place everywhere, so I don't uh, start milling my uh, clamps. <laughs> uh, okay, there you are. And now, uh, next thing is to mill those uh, flats. So, two flats, one for this side and another for this side. And, uh, well, I think it's just, let's go. Well, <laughs> I have already started here, uh, so uh, at the moment I have been removing 0 0.2 millimeters from this surface. And the surface finish is, uh, well, it's uh, not the nicest because I'm running this uh, actually quite, quite fast, no, yeah, fast, 70 millimeters per minute versus uh, 400 rpm. So, well, I don't know. With one, one uh, blade only, it's uh, quite fast. So, uh, well, uh, let's uh, do this uh, now uh, one more time. I'm peeling off 0 0.1 millimeters. It should clean up this. Uh, there is there one place where we need to clean up. And also here. Yeah.
Well, that surface finish is, uh, well, quite good. Uh, so now I will uh, change over to this side. Well, uh, I have uh, zeroed my dial here for the Z-axis so I can lift it. And let's see if I can go to the other side without damaging my insert. Because this one damages if you scrape with it. Oh yeah, okay, it's uh, above the surface. Oh man. Let's see. I want to see. Ah, this is hard to turn. Ah. Yeah, okay. See about the place now. Okay, well. Then also the other end. Okay. And then I hope that uh, I can uh, get this uh, uh, to the same height. Uh, it might be that I need to, if I need to take deeper on the, that side, I need to go back to that side and make that also a little bit deeper. That, well, to, to the same depth. Let's see now. Well, there you are. Now we have uh, two known good surfaces here. And uh, well, next step, I will uh, <laughs> take it away from here, deburr it. Uh, it has a horrific burr on uh, all these sides. And uh, yeah, after that, we can uh, put it upside down uh, on top of parallels and we can start milling the other side straight. So, uh, I have now uh, two parallels here under, uh, on the planes I made the, uh, to the other side. And now, if I knock these, uh, first of all the milling table, and then this one, the sound is similar. It means that there is no gap under this. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. The same here. 
this has a gap here. This doesn't. So maybe there is a chip or something under, but there is definitely a gap under this corner. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. As long as uh, these are this side now, which I'm coming to clean up, is uh, like level with the parallels and the milling table, it's okay. So now, uh, what I'm going to do, I have just touched this surface, you can probably see here. And now uh, I'm going to take away the milling scale from here. Uh, actually, it will be 0.1 millimeters depth, cut of depth. And we are running this about, uh, for, for, wait a minute, uh, about 400 uh, revolutions per minute, uh, feeding 70 millimeters per uh, minute. So let's go. So, why did I do multiple passes here? <laughs> well, this is just so hard material that you... Uh, something flexes here. So, but now it's... Uh, uh, you cannot feel anything there. And furthermore, it's uh, more like a mirror surface. Yeah, uh, my fingerprints there already. <laughs> so... I will uh, now do this uh, until I get all the rest here also done. Well, <coughs> uh, the uh, side I just milled is now uh, on the downside. And uh, next step is to uh, mill the dimensions uh, correct. So. Uh, we should have one straight edge and then uh, two perpendicular edges uh, with that one, uh, which are like uh, the distance between those should be, uh, well, 99.90, uh, maybe 5 millimeters. I'll measure it more accurately what it should be, but uh, I will uh, now do three sides for this workpiece. The first one is this, and I'm peeling off only half a millimeter here. Uh, this is uh, carbide end mill. I'm running this uh, about 400 uh, revolutions per minute, and I'm feeding, uh, well, 17 millimeters per minute 
we shall see how this looks like. Uh, where is where are my safety goggles? <laughs> ah, there. Okay. Always needed. And now, let's start. Well, <coughs> it made a mirror finish into that one. <laughs> I'll take a picture about that uh, and uh, show it to you. Let's uh, see, wait a minute. Uh, because this uh, surface is really amazing. Macro lens on. And there you go. Go. Huh. Doesn't want to focus, you know. Okay. There. And yeah, and now uh, I need to uh, take it away from here and uh, debur it, and after that I turn it 90 degrees. Well, uh, now uh, this surface here is the one we just milled. And uh, now I have dialed it in so that in this direction uh, it's absolutely straight. So when I mill this side now it will become perpendicular to this side. Uh, well, otherwise uh, the parameters are exactly the same. So uh, 400 uh, revolutions per minute, uh, half a millimeter cut, uh, 30 millimeters uh, per minute feed. And away you go. Well, well, yeah, another mirror, <laughs> mirror surface there. Well, <laughs> now I have a, a. This is the first surface we uh, did, and then uh, uh, here in the back side is another. I have dialed this in so that it's uh, absolutely, as far as I can measure, this is uh, going to be perpendicular. Uh, as you can see, it's no more an end mill. And now, uh, this uh, was actually the reason why I have this uh, uh, horizontal milling setup. So I can do this. Uh, <coughs> what we have here is now a slitting saw. This is 0 0.6 millimeters uh, wide, and I'm going to cut the extra piece out from there. This is uh, like uh, 26 millimeters too wide. So uh, why uh, risking uh, to explode an uh, end uh, uh, slitting saw? Well, <laughs> uh, first of all, uh, you don't uh, waste material. Uh, this is tool steel, it's not cheap actually. Uh, well, for me it was not that expensive, but uh, you get a very uh, nice uh, chunk out from this. Uh, you can use it somewhere else. Yeah. And uh, furthermore, uh, uh, you get uh, uh, 
not that much mess around. I try to cut this dry, uh, but uh, uh, we shall see. But uh, I assume it could be. I'm feeding this manually and very carefully. Uh, this uh, uh, I have a very bad experience from these. These can really explode and. Uh, we might be uh, up to a very nice explosion so here. <laughs> so, oh well. Uh, mm, okay, uh, I'm running this uh, about 100 RPM at the moment. About, maybe, no, not 100. It's 85 or something like that. And uh, I'm feeding manually first. Uh, I believe I'm going to feed it all the way manually because uh, uh, well, because. So, let's go. N not, we don't need to feed just this. And yeah, uh, in this, because it can really explode, I have uh, safety goggles on. That's, uh, <laughs> uh, that's not an option here. It's mandatory. Yeah, I already started a little bit of it. And now it starts to cut at any moment now. There you go. Oh. At least it's not vibrating, which is really good. Uh, well, uh, this is actually, this is uh, carbide uh, slitting, so I might like to increase the speed a little bit. Let's see now. Let's do 110. And maybe I could use power feed, but uh, that's just maybe. Well, yeah, that's better, actually. What's that? Ah, man! We have a problem. We have a problem. We need to... Well, uh, this side here collides with that side here. So, yeah. It should be there. Hmm. What do you see? It is there. Okay, let's see now. If it makes... Yeah, it's not on the place. I... That's worse. I think that's our place. I adjusted it just a little bit. Yeah, okay. Then we go again. And now we have room there. This is not as rigid as it, as it was. So hopefully it doesn't uh, do... No, it doesn't. It's a little bit different though. Change over to my safety goggles, I had uh, those. But, uh, well, <laughs> this is going to be not fun. Maybe I could... Let's see if I rise the speed even more. Now it's 150. And if this doesn't resonate, I might be using the power feed.
Oh, that was a bad sound. <laughs> ah, what was it? Ah, let's try out. It's not hot. Good. Well, maybe we just go on. Uh, oh man. The sun ah now I know the blade is actually okay entering the uh, backside and now uh, it's actually probably just most dangerous part of this cut. there you go Bob, <laughs> it's uh, oh, yeah. ah. Hmm. Okay, let's pull it up. <laughs> there you are, <laughs> man. This is uh, well. It didn't uh, explode in the in the sense of exploding, but yeah. Let's see if I can get this out. This is typical carbide uh, blade, uh, like going crazy. Now I should get rid of all possible shrapnels out from there. Yeah, please come. Yeah. Okay. And now let's uh, see. If we have, have all the pieces of this puzzle. No, we don't. Actually, we are missing one piece. Where is it? Is it that? There? Yeah. yeah, okay, I found it. Because now you really don't want to leave any part uh, of this slitting saw inside there. We might have a minor piece inside there somewhere. Hmm. Okay. No big chunks anyway. Yeah. And there we go. So I will just now continue until I'm, uh, I have done. I will uh, do this off the camera. It's uh, not worth seeing me turning uh, that piece of material into chips. Okay, and now <laughs> uh, when we have the correct dimension uh, white wise, uh, next we need to have uh, the thickness uh, set correctly. Vein that would barely fit into that uh, groove in the rotor would be 3.3 millimeters wide, but I don't want to, it to be a really snug fit. Uh, well, I give it a rattle for uh, 0.05 millimeters, so 500 millimeters of rattle. <laughs> now I'm uh, peeling off uh, 2.66 millimeters, so it will leave here uh, the required uh, 3.25 millimeters, which I measure at some point. So, uh, well, 
Uh, yeah, the width of uh, one uh, one vein would be 14 millimeters, and uh, it will be parted off using <laughs> a slitting saw. <laughs> Man, <Ma. coughs> uh, well, I really don't have an option here. Uh, I could try a small uh, three millimeter uh, end mill, but that would be as tedious. Well, I'm running this again. 400 uh, revolutions per minute, and I'm feeding this uh, 30 millimeters per minute. So let's go! Okay, uh, well, uh, this is now 16 millimeters wide, and as you can see, it's no more an end mill, it's uh, something else. <coughs> well, uh, intention here, this is going to be the side that goes against the cylinder wall, and I'm going to use this tool to make it uh, round. So it will not be totally round, but very near that. And uh, I have ground this specific tool for this purpose. I hope it doesn't rub too much. It shouldn't, but you never know. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm running this uh, 120 revolutions per minute, like that. And then uh, I'm cutting, uh, well, half a millimeter. Hopefully that is not too much. So now we go. Uh, 17 millimeters per minute is the feed, but uh, I first try this out manually. It will knock a little bit at first. I know it for sure. Should start knocking at any moment now. Hopefully this doesn't... Hopefully this does behave. It's high speed. Oh yeah, uh, since this is a high speed steel cutter, and we have tool steel, uh, there is some. I I have put put some rockol into there. Oh now it's, and it's not knocking too hard. Actually, it's very nice. Well, it's knocking. Well, you can hear it starting to whistle. Well, it tries to whistle on me. Maybe we should take this uh, with two cuts. So now it's five millimeters. I will uh, take it back a little bit. So 0 0.25 millimeter cut first. Uh, 0 0.25, not 0 0.3. 25. There you are. Let's see how this does. I don't want that uh, weasel there. Yeah, now it's it's better. So I will make two passes with this one. Yeah. Okay. So now we start.
Well, there you are. And it really did cut something. <laughs> uh, not real ch Oh yeah, these are real chips. And not just dust. <laughs> wow, one more time. Uh, well, uh, this is uh, uh, not hilarious. <laughs> uh, man, hopefully this uh, doesn't uh, spoil my workpiece. Uh, well, uh, it shouldn't, but you never, never ever know. Uh, this time it's a uh, two millimeter wide uh, slitting so uh, high speed steel so it doesn't chatter so easily. Uh, I'm running this at 100 rpm and uh, I'm trying to be careful and I'm using cutting oil. When it now comes out from there, let's see how it sounds. Let's see how does it look like. Looks pretty decent. I think I can raise the speed a little bit. I try to use uh, power feed in this case. Now it's 150. And if it uh, doesn't uh, resonate then I can probably use power feed in this case. Wow, this is... Huh. Hmm. I really don't like this, but let's see now. Wow! To look into there. <laughs> okay. Uh, it would make uh, better chips if I would use automatic feed. I wish I would have a little bit slower feed here, but I don't. Let's see, for a short while. How do I do this? I'm trying to be out of uh, the way of the shrapnels. If there will be shrapnels. Hmm. Well, it's smoking, at least, but not a lot. Well, it didn't rip it off very gently. Oh. Wow! Okay, so now I know the parameters how to do this. Oh. And this is the result. Oh. Let's see. I clean this up a little bit here. Wow. This is actually very good. That's the workpiece. I will uh, have a photo. Uh, well, that uh, slitting saw cut is not perfect, but it's good enough. 
uh, because this is going to be just there in, in, in the crew. But uh, this side, which is now the uh, uh, thing that is facing the uh, cylinder wall, is it's perfect. It's rounded. I don't know whether you can see this. It's rounded here. And it's really... It's perfect. Wow. Wow! First done. Uh, well, uh, we need to fit it, see if it fits into there. I will uh, clean up and <laughs> this mess, uh, this is messy job. Here are now uh, six veins. Um, well, uh, this is uh, what was left uh, of the material. Oh, well, it's a suitable piece for something. Uh, yeah, okay. But uh, there is a problem. Uh, these are too long. <laughs> they shouldn't be, but they are. They are actually um, hmm, quite exactly half a millimeter too long. <laughs> Which indicates that I have been misreading my micrometer one, one more time. Uh, oh man, uh, okay, uh, let me uh, zoom you into there. So, uh, well, I have a setup here. <laughs> uh, this we don't need anymore. Uh, first of all, uh, there is a vice, which I have uh, like dialed in. And then I have here back, you might see it or might not see, but here is a stop. Uh, and uh, I can put this workpiece, each of them, into here, and it, it's uh, against the stop. Uh, that way. Okay, it's against the stop. Then I have uh, this piece of uh, material which has a very nice edge which I put on top of everything here. So, and uh, this is to push this uh, workpiece with this one down. Mm. Not a lot, but uh, enough so that it, uh, uh, well, because if I only uh, tighten it with uh, the jaws, it might uh, pop up when I mill it. So, yeah, let's see now. I see that it's touching the stop. Yeah, there you are, at the stop. And then I push it down a little bit, not a lot, just enough so that it is there. And then uh, this uh, vice takes care that it's uh, leaning against the uh, jaw. And now I can mill this uh, yeah, 
Okay. Well, uh, the speed for this would be. Uh, yeah, uh, let's see about the speed. Uh, hmm. That's absolutely too slow, but I will uh, dial in here something like. Well, a little bit more this time because uh, it should be. Uh, let's stop this. Change to high gear like that. And now the speed is about 500 RPM. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, this is a totally manual operation. And what I will do, I will first uh, uh, just touch it like this, uh, not like that. Uh, there you are, I think there you are. We need uh, to lock the X at some point. Wait a minute, this is not very easy to do. Okay. There you are. So I lock my X here. And uh, after milling this uh, surface, I hope it... Uh, uh, I will measure it. Let's see if it uh, cleans... Not cleans, but... Mills something out from there. Yes, it does. And then I do a spring pass this way, blind milling, like that. And now I have a dial, a zeroed my dial here, the X direction, so we know where it is. If I make these 99.95 millimeters long, they are still too long into there. Uh, they will bite. So uh, 500 of a millimeter uh, smaller, so 99.9. .9. And now we are 10.3. So it should be 0 0.4 millimeters, is it? Let's see. This should be it. That's that, and then back. It's very important to do it the same way every time. It should be there. Nine point ninety two. 9.93 or 2. <sighs> Is it in the middle? Because this must be absolutely in the... Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's 9.92. 9 so I need to take a little bit more. Nine point nine looks that way. So now we should be able to mill the rest <laughs> with these parameters uh, without uh, doing anything else but changing the workpiece into there. Uh, 
but now it will be taking a lot more, so I have to progress really slowly here. Well, I think uh, we can do this uh, blindly even. So now we have two done. I will do the rest for uh, off the camera and uh, we come back uh, uh, when I put this into the... Uh, <laughs> into where they should be and uh, test whether they fit there. Okay. Now, let's put this thing together. <laughs> Okay, I'm really satisfied with this one. Yeah, uh, now we have uh, have uh, done the veins. Uh, well, despite one mishap with the slitting saw, uh, I consider this been uh, quite successful. When I finally uh, uh, found out the parameters how to use these uh, slitting saws, it uh, works actually quite well. Well, uh, yeah, running uh, this uh, carbide. Uh, Slitting saw, which is really thin, uh, it was, uh, was it 0 0.6 millimeters? Uh, well, uh, that's not a very good idea. And actually, I should have been using uh, cutting oil with that one. Uh, if you look into the, uh, into the Udeholm uh, uh, data sheet about this material, they state that uh, you should use uh, carbide inserts uh, with uh, coating. Uh, this is m probably because uh, uh, carbide and uh, this um, uh, material, this uh, tool steel, uh, it galls. Uh, that's, uh, I suspect uh, that that was what happened uh, in that case. And it did it really, really uh, rapidly. Okay, so uh, well, in the next episode of Finno Creek Machining, it will be an additional disc to that one. Mm. On the front side, where the drive shaft is, uh, there is a <coughs> the oil uh, is pressurized inside uh, to the same pressure as is the uh, the press uh, the compressed air. 
so it will squirt out uh, through that uh, small uh, bearing. And I don't want it to squirt uh, uh, onto the table. <laughs> uh, it should go back into the, into the pump, uh, into the uh, low pressure side, actually. So, well, yeah, uh, that's uh, one thing. Uh, yeah, and uh, if you wonder about uh, those seem to be really loose, those um, veins, yeah, uh, it's... Uh, they are no more loose when there is uh, some oil in between there. Uh, it is actually the oil that is sealing this. And there will be coming uh, some oil through this uh, thing. Uh, hopefully more air than oil. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, so that disc will be the next uh, uh, next item to do for this, and this will be in the next episode of Finno Creek Machining. So, till then, bye!